Okay, so there's a couple of news items that I want to go over and comment on as it relates to Bitcoin. The first one here that came out today is uh, COVID-19 crisis worst in IMF history as officials anticipate lengthy recovery. So yeah, this is uh, this situation here, right here, is the worst situation. It's un unprecedented what uh, what's happening right now in the economy. Everything, all sectors, all markets, just came to a complete standstill. So uh, we've never seen this before. Um, every country is hit. Uh, the, the people suffering the most of the countries, the poorer countries of the world uh, that don't have the cash and don't have the resources to s sustain. Uh, so yeah, definitely a long road to recover. Uh, as it relates to Bitcoin, uh, it says here, with the global economy at a standstill, most investors see danger in nearly every sector. Bitcoin has seen relative stability at or near 6,500, which is true, over the past week as investors appear to have weathered the most painful season. A return to high seen at the beginning of the year, however, may require widespread economic recovery, and as the IMF suggested, the road ahead could be long. So next up, uh, they, they uh, did a study. They uh, asked Indians who own crypto, uh, you know, if they, li if they like it and, if, and, and why. And they found out they uh, they mostly hold it because they feel the banks are incompetent. A lot of them can't uh, can't be banked, so they use Bitcoin as a way to transfer funds, uh, either you know uh, to pe to other people or geographically uh, to family members and whatnot. So they are definitely using uh, crypto the way it's supposed to be take advantage of its strengths which is to send money from one location to another location with low fees uh, without the uh, use of an intermediary like a bank so uh, very interesting um, recently uh, India had made Bitcoin legal as you know for the longest time they it was illegal uh, it was a ban on it so it's good to see uh, our Indian friends uh, using Bitcoin the way it's supposed to be used. All right, so moving on. Retail bought 3.7K Bitcoin price dip on record 76 billion volume. You're right. So uh, it looks like people want to buy Bitcoin. They feel it has value, but they want to buy it when it's cheap. Because <laughs> when the market sold off, uh, Bitcoin sold off too. And we feel that's because uh, I did a video on this already that uh, they were just like we saw in gold and, and silver, it fell along with stocks as people sold these assets to uh, uh, to go into cash, to raise cash to cover margin calls. And uh, here, Bitcoin sell off propelled by Dash for Cash. Not only did Bitcoin see its largest spike in spot trading volumes during the crash to 3750 but fiat volumes also increased substantially as traders sought liquidity amidst the corona panic. This also triggered similar sell-offs in global equities and commodity markets, which is exactly what we saw. But the retail demand spikes after the sell-off, which is interesting. The uh, recent Coinbase report explained that 48 hours after the crash brought record-breaking numbers for the company compared to yearly averages. So people were just buying up that cheap Bitcoin. Uh, Google Trends saw an uptick in Bitcoin interest with the phrase buy Bitcoin. So people were looking for how to buy it. So it shows new, new interest. CME Bitcoin data shows institutions pulled out. So that explains the sell-off that we saw here was mostly institutional investors which backs up the claim that a lot of this sell-off was to cover those those longs will the retail demand drive the market higher in 2020 it's hard to say people are being pushed towards traditional safe havens like gold and silver which is true we've seen uh, silver is very hard to find gold is very hard to find 
right now the physical uh, it's it's commanding a price way over spot it's kind of ridiculous right now uh, the supply dried up and but the demand is super high so that money's got to go somewhere and Bitcoin's cheap so uh, but at the same time uh, people are more worried about you know people that are losing their jobs and stuff are worried about having cash on hand so it's hard to say it's hard to say what's gonna happen it could go either way all right next up FDIC announces first coronavirus fueled bank failure in the United States which is definitely exactly the case for Bitcoin when banks start going under uh, this bank I think where was it West Virginia FDIC has announced that a small bank is closing its doors in West Virginia the close the closure has been directly tied to the economic fallout of the coronavirus pandemic is this the first of many we shall see luckily this is only one bank so the deposits were protected but what happens when a dozen or so banks or more when this happens to them B in crypto previously reported that U.S. banks now have a 0% reserve requirements. What that means is banks usually are supposed to have a reserve of cash. So if people that have their monies in the bank want to pull it out, that they have reserves to meet that demand, now they're not required to have anything. That is scary. Uh, I did the last video I talked about, the banks were saying, do not do a bank run, please because they just do not have the cash. Uh, it says your financial sovereignty is key. That is being your own bank, uh, which is what Bitcoin gives you. So does gold and silver, because then you store your wealth and you can uh, sell off what you need when you need it. For the cryptocurrency industry, the case for Bitcoin has never been stronger. However, amid the time of financial uncertainty, many Americans are sadly struggling to make ends meet. If the pandemic worsens, the situation at the First State Bank may just be the initial domino to fall before many other others as Americans request their money in cash. Okay, so next up, Bitcoin's hedging performance in the wake of the coronavirus outbreak. This is a kind of a bearish article. They talk about, they did a study uh, comparing how Bitcoin performed uh, during the 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 outbreak to see whether it can compare with you know if it if it correlated with stocks and if it compared uh, with gold and silver as a as a safe haven. The study showed that gold indeed lived up to its expectation to serve as a safe haven in times of troubles. Bitcoin turned out to be a curse rather than digital gold which a lot of people refer to Bitcoin as. To sum up, the study employed the outbreak of the pandemic as a quasi-experimental design to investigate the hedging abilities of Bitcoin, which has been referred to as digital gold, to highlight its renowned abilities to hedge risk uh, investments for various financial asset classes, in particular stocks. The study's findings suggest that Bitcoin performed poorly in hedging this extraordinary tail risk in U.S. stocks. Unlike earlier research, the findings suggest that Bitcoin is indeed exposed to extraordinary tail risks in other asset classes as stocks. So what they're saying is, compared to gold and silver, uh, Bitcoin didn't prove to be a quote-unquote safe haven in times of trouble. But I would argue that um, uh, Bitcoin uh, is going to lag behind uh, gold and silver because of course people are going to flock as safe havens they're going to flock especially if they're really scared I mean this was a legit it is a legit uh, fear so people were would kind of predictably f go to assets that are you know known to be safe havens that have the history to back it up which is gold and silver but what happens uh, when you see what we're seeing now when uh, supply just dries up you can't get it and if you can you're paying three four maybe sometimes five times over the spot price where's that money gonna go the next best thing is Bitcoin so I think there's gonna be a lag 
Uh, so you know this study that would make this study obsolete because they're only using the time frame of uh, March 12th to March 18th. All right, so moving on. U.S. consumer confidence plummets as economic situation worsens. U.S. consumer confidence has fallen drastically in just the past few weeks. The widespread pessimism can be attributed to worsening employment numbers. Uh, the cryptocurrency market may be a sideshow due to worsening economic crisis. So let's just jump down to that part. Maca macroeconomic indicators and Bitcoin. The state of the world economy has the potential to hurt the cryptocurrency industry. With declining purchasing power, consumers possibly won't be as interested in the blockchain space when there's more pressing concerns on the table, which is valid. If you're concerned about how you're going to feed your family, you're probably not looking to buy Bitcoin. However, the plot thickens when we imagine long-term prospects. It is possible that Bitcoin's future price action resembles that of gold after the 2008 financial crisis, as some commentators have noted. It was then that the precious metal fell during the 2008 recession before trending higher and higher as the economic crisis continued. Like I said, there's, there's a little bit of a lag. Digital, cryptocur digital currencies also became an arena of global competition as the world finds itself moving away from the dollar. However, the short-term forecast remains uncertain and analysts are split. With rising unemployment, the cryptocurrency sector will likely become a mere sideshow in the face of more pressing global threats and concerns. Ultimately, it is the macro indicators for the world economy that cryptocurrency traders have been focusing on as of late. Class action lawsuits filed against 11 Bitcoin companies. What they really mean to say is 11 altcoin companies, not Bitcoin, because Bitcoin is not a company. But anyway, headlines. So yeah, there's this class action lawsuit. They're suing 11 companies, including Tron, EOS, uh, I think Binance was in there. And basically the issue they have is, you know, that they sold quote unquote securities during the ICO, uh, which uh, if you, you can't sell to US investors, that law came out, oh, that law kind of came out after these ICOs, I believe that these particular ICOs came out. So, uh, but also not only that, they're going after people or exchanges that sold those same tokens on exchanges, which to me doesn't make sense. Um, there's a thing known as the Hoei test uh, to test whether something is a security or not. And that's basically if there's if you're buying something uh, like a certificate, a coin, uh, a stock in a pre-ICO phase and there is a promise of uh, like a return on investment. Like someone says, you know, if you give me X amount of dollars, I will give you a 1% return or some, some share of profits then that would consider that would be considered a security but this is not that even ICOs um, there's no promise of return it's basically you're investing in a, in a company it's like buying a stock but you're you're doing it in the in the pre IPO stage before it's released so you're investing in a company before it's released if that company does well you'll make money. If that company doesn't do well, you won't. There's no promise. There's no promise of anything. So I really don't understand this lawsuit. Um, it's kind of like, I mean, these people, when they when they invest in a cryptocurrency coin, uh, they're basically people who understand that, you know, that this is risky. It's gambling. And they're saying, here, take my money. I have this this free money that I don't need that... I'm going to put on your company in hopes and to gamble whether I'm going to someone's going to give me more money for it later. And if you're going to do a uh, a lawsuit it's kind of like it's kind of like gambling and e either whether you win or you lose it doesn't matter you could win or you could lose you sue the casino because you know gambling is wrong. To me it, it doesn't make any sense. 
because a lot of these people, depending on when they bought and when they sold, a lot of them could have made money, made a lot of money, and but they still want to sue. So I don't know. So what's the case of Bitcoin? I mean, what's it going to do? I mean, we're at a stage right now that it can go either way. It really can. I mean, we're like right in the middle. So we've got this wedge going on here. First of all, we're above the 20-day moving average, which is a good sign. You know, we can see we can see this staying above hopefully the the moving average. But at the same time, we have some pretty strong resistance here so we move this out and extend these lines where's the bottom there so you can see that wedge that wedge forming there and we are right in the middle of it so I would definitely wouldn't be adding to a position here at this point uh, what I've been doing is when it um, when it crosses the 20 day like if it crosses below the 20 day if like if I get a good close below the 20 day moving average I'll move some Bitcoin to tether and write it out and when it crosses above I'll move it back to Bitcoin so just real real simple strategy there nothing too too crazy but uh, yeah if we see a breakout uh, like this yellow line here if we see a breakout um, the next stop would be well we have some resistance at 7,000 but it could, could go as high as 10,000 but if it breaks below it could go as low as 3,000 there's some resistance at 3,000 uh, but it could go as low as 1,000 so unlikely but just something to be aware of Anyway, that's it for now. Let me know what you think of these uh, articles. Uh, what's your thoughts of crypto in general? Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one. Peace.